Hey, well, welcome back to theCUBE's cover of DockerCon Main Stage. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with Shubha Rao, Senior Manager, Product Manager at AWS and the Container Services. Shubha, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Excited to be here. So obviously, we've been doing a lot of coverage with AWS recently on containers, cloud native, microservices, and we see you guys always at the events. But tell me about what your role is in the organization. Yeah, so I lead the product management and developer advocacy team uh, in the AWS Container Services Group, where we focus on elastic containers. And what I mean by elastic containers is that um, all the AWS opinionated, uh, out of the box solutions that we have for you, like you know ECS and uh, AppRunner and Elastic Beanstalk. So where we bring in our services in a way that integrates with the AWS ecosystem. And uh, you know, my team manages the product management and speaking to customers and developers like you all to uh, understand how we can improve our services for, for you to use it more seamlessly. So, I mean, I know AWS has a lot of services that have containers involved with them and there's a lot of integration within the cloud. It's cloud native, as can, Amazon is the cloud native as you're going to get at AWS. If I was a new customer, where do I start with containers? If you had to give me advice, um, and then where I have a great, nice roadmap to grow within AWS? Yeah, no, that's a great question. A lot of customers ask us this. We recommend that the customers choose whatever is the best fit for their application needs and uh, the, for their operational uh, flexibility. So uh, if you have an application which you can use a uh, pretty abstracted, like end-to-end -end managed by AWS service, we recommend that you start at the highest level of abstraction that's okay to use for your application. And that means something like AppRunner, where you can bring in a web application and run it like end to end. Or uh, and if if there are things that you want to control and uh, tweak, then you know we have services like ECS, where you get control and you get flexibility to uh, tweak it to your needs. Be it needs of like integrations, or running your own agents, and running your own partner solutions, or. Uh, or even customizing how it scales and all the you know characteristics related to it. And, and, and of course we have, if there are a lot of our customers also run Kubernetes, so that is a requirement for you if your apps are already uh, packaged to run uh, you know easily with the Kubernetes ecosystem, then we have EKS for you. Uh, so like application needs, um, the operational, uh, how much of the operations do you want us to handle or how much of it do you want to actually have control over? And um, with all that, like the highest level of abstraction so that we can do the work on your behalf, which is the goal of AWS. Yeah, well, we always hear that, all that heavy lifting, undifferentiated heavy lifting on you guys handle all that. Since you're in pro product management, I have to ask the question, because um, you guys have a little bit longer view uh, as you have to think about what's on the roadmap. What type of customer trends are you seeing in container services? Um, so that's, uh, we see a lot of trends about uh, customers who want to have um, the you know, pluggability for their you know, services of choice and our EKS offerings actually help, help in uh, that. And we see customers who want an opinionated, you know, give me an out of the box solution rather than building blocks and ECS brings you that experience. Uh, the newest trends that we are seeing is that a lot of our customer workloads are also on their uh, data centers and in their on-prem like environments, uh, be it branch offices or data centers or like you know other areas. And so we've recently launched the Anywhere offerings uh, for you. So ECS Anywhere brings you an experience for um, letting your workloads run in an environment that you control, where we manage the scaling and the orchestration and the um, and the, the whole like you know monitoring and uh, troubleshooting aspects of it, uh, which is which is um, the new trend, which seems to be something that the customers use as a way to migrate their applications to the cloud in the long term, or just to get uh, you know the the same experience and the same like constructs that they're familiar with come onto their data centers and uh, their environments. You know, Shuba, we hear a lot about containers as becoming standard in the enterprise now, mainstream. But customers, when we talk to them, they kind of have this evolution. They start with containers and they realize how great it is and they become container full, right? And then you start to see kind of them trying to evolve to the next level. And then you start to see EKS come into the equation. We see that in cloud native. Um, is EKS a container? Is it a service? How does that work with everything? So EKS is a Amazon managed uh, service, container service, where we do the operational setup, uh, you know, upgrades and other things for the customer on their behalf. So basically, 
uh, you get the same Kubernetes APIs that you get to uh, use for your application, but uh, we handle a little bit of the integrations and the operations related to keeping it up and running with high availability in a way that actually meets your needs for the applications. And more and more people are dipping their toe in the water, as we say, with containers. What are some of the things you've seen customers do when they jump in and start implementing that kind of phase one containers? Obviously there's a lot of headroom uh, beyond that, as you mentioned, what's the first couple steps that they take? They, they jump in, do they, is it a learning process? Is, there, is it serverless? Where does the connection points all come together? Right, so I, I, I want to say that no one solution that we have fits all needs. Like it's not the best case, but best thing for all your use cases and not for your, uh, all, all of your applications. So um, how it all comes together is that AWS gives you a rich ecosystem of tools and capabilities. Some customers want to really build the, you know, castle themselves with each of the Lego block and some customers want it to be a ready-made thing. And uh, I want, uh, you know, one, one of the things that I speak to customers about is about is to rethink which of the knobs and controls do they really need to have, uh, you know, because none of the services we have is a one-way door. Like there is always flexibility and, um, you know, ability to move from one service to the other. So I, my, my recommendation is to always like start with things where Amazon handles many of the heavy lifting, uh, you know, operations for you. And, and that means starting with something like uh, our serverless offerings where like, for example, with Lambda and Forget, we manage the host, we manage the patching, we manage the monitoring. And that would be a great place for you to use a uh, ECS uh, offering and you know they basically get an end-to-end -end experience in a couple of days and over time if you have more needs if you have more control uh, you know if you want to bring in your own agents and whatever else you have the option to use your own EC2 instances or to take it to other like you know parts of the AWS ecosystem where you want to uh, you know tweak, tweak it to the to your needs. Well, we're seeing a lot of great traction here at DockerCon and all the momentum around containers. And then you're starting to get into trust and, and security supply chain as open source becomes so uh, more exp exponentially in growth. It's growing like crazy, which is a great thing. So what can we expect to see from your team in the coming months as, as this rolls forward. It's not going away anytime soon. It's going to be integrated and keep on scaling. What do we expect from the team in the next month or so, a couple of months? Security and uh, you know is our number one job. So you will continue to see more and more uh, features, capabilities and integrations to ensure that your workloads are secure. Uh, availability and scaling are the things that we do, you know, as keep the lights on. So you should expect to see any, all of our services growing to make it like more user-friendly, easier, uh, you know, simpler ways to get the uh, whole availability and scaling to your needs um, better. And, and then, like, you know, very specifically, I want to touch on uh, a few services. So App Runner, today we have support for public facing web services. You can expect that the number of use cases that you can uh, meet with App Runner is going to increase over time. We want to invest into making it uh, AWS end-to-end uh, -end workflow experience for our customers because that's the easiest journey to the cloud. And we don't want you to actually wait for uh, months and years to actually uh, leverage the benefits of what AWS provides. Uh, if you look at ECS, we've already launched our, like, you know, Fargate and Fargate uh, and uh, anywhere else to bring you more flexibility in terms of easier networking capabilities, more um, more granular controls in deployment and uh, more controls to actually help you plug in your uh, preferred, uh, preferred you know, solution ties. And uh, in EKS, we are going to continue to uh, keep, keep the Kubernetes uh, you know, versions and, uh, you know, bring simpler experiences for you to use. A lot of nice growth there, containers, EKS, a lot more goodness in the cloud, obviously. We have 30 seconds left. Um, tell us what you're most excited about personally and what should the developers pay attention to in this conference around containers and AWS? Um, I would say that AWS uh, has a lot of offerings, but, you know, speak to us, like come and come to us with your questions or, uh, you know, any, anything that you have, like in terms of feature requests, we are very, very eager and happy to speak to you all. Um, you know, you can engage with us on the containers roadmap, which is on GitHub. Uh, or, uh, you can find, you know, many of us in events like this, AWS summits and you know, DockerCon and many of the uh, other meetups or find us on LinkedIn. We are always happy to chat. Yeah, always open, open source. Open source meets cloud scale, meets commercialization, all happening, all great stuff. Shibu, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing. We'll send it back now to the DockerCon main stage. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching.